Greetings, my dear fellow believers in Jesus Christ, waiting for his soon return. Welcome to this Prophetic Revelations. Uh, this is part two, my dear friends. By the way, uh, have a blessed preparation day today, Friday. I hope you prepared. For us here, it's already Sabbath hours because this is at night now here. So happy preparation day, blessed preparation day, and stay focused and stay strong, my dear friends. Jesus is coming soon. Today we're going to look at a very interesting one. We still continue with our following up, step by step, head on, on what's happening in Egypt. As the Satanists are worshipping the whole world, has gone to Egypt, all the demons of this earth are in Egypt. Though they've left some demons in their countries to fight some of us, but they're in Egypt right now. Because it's a very, very serious uh, ceremony that is going to take place at climax on 13th. Uh, the Sunday the 13th. Uh, but my dear friends, uh, this is a very spiritual uh, topic and it needs the interference of the Holy Spirit. It needs the presence of the ministering holy angels sent from Jesus, sent from God, and we need that protection and guidance. Let us pray before we begin. Let us pray, my dear friends. Mighty Father, Lord, who dwells in heaven. Lord, we come once more before your holy throne. Lord, we bow because you're the only one who deserves worship, praise, and glory, and honor. We are nothing but vessels. Lord, you have chosen me to do this very, very heavy task. Lord, on my own, I can't do anything. I'm nothing, I'm just weak. But because you have appointed me, You've anointed me to do this very, very heavy and very, very important job to spread this gospel, to tell the world not to accept the mark of the beast, to tell the world, Lord, that the devil wants to be worshipped before you come. Lord, help me. Help the people who have sacrificed their precious time and data and money to watch and to listen and to learn those who have humbled themselves, to listen, even those who are older than 43 years old, those who, have, who don't regard not never to listen to someone who's younger than them. Lord, you have humbled them. Bless them. Strengthen them, mighty Father. As we are going to go through today's lesson, we pray, Lord, that all the demons that are going to affect, that have been sent to target the listeners so that they doze and sleep and abandon and don't get anything from this. Lord, destroy them. Bless my listeners. Bless your followers. They are your children, Lord. More especially those in the remnant church because their time is really running out. In the precious name of our master, our king of kings, Jesus, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> my brothers and sisters, uh, today, we are going to look at a very important uh, a subject, but before we go into today's subject, uh, I want to read something from the prophet, Ellen G. White. This is the book here that uh, is very, very special. This is called, uh, I hope you can see, Signs of the Times. I've got like f five volumes of this one. And if any one of you needs material, you can just contact me. I'll be very, very happy to give you material. Remember, at the end, it will not be social media. It will not be electronics. It will not be TV because they'll take charge of all these things. Uh, there's a time that God is going to let us off. But the only word they cannot take charge away from you is the written word. So you need the King James Version in written, not on your phones. You also need the Spirit of Prophecy books in written. You still have chance, you still have money, but you are not using that money. You are buying pizza, pizza. You are, you're just, the devil has taken, Lord have mercy on your children. Lord have mercy on your children. Oh God, give them another breathing space, but there's no time. So I'm going to read my dear friends from here. The church of Rome rejected the word of God and set up a creed and tradition in its place. This resulted in separation from God and the connection with the world and with the earthly governments. 
government, mark those words, which gives her the title of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of this earth. That is the church of Rome. Revelation 17 verse 5. This great apostasy is foretold in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 1 to 8. Like causes produce like results. Now, these Protestants started out in the Great Reformation in, of the 16th century. We we're talking about that in the other episode of Great Controversy. Uh, on the platform of the Bible and Bible only as their rule of faith and practice. And God wrote for them wonderfully. But a great apostasy has arisen in the Protestant world. You can see 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5 and 4 verse 1 to 4. It is the great Protestant apostasy of the last days and is caused by the rejection of the plain teaching of the word of God and the setting up of creeds and tradition in its place. This is resulting in worldliness and in seeking help and support from the world and from the state instead of God. This Babel of creeds makes, them, makes the term Babylon a very fitting one for the prophesied Protestants who are stepping off the Protestant rock of the Bible only as the rule of faith and practice and are following in the footsteps of Rome. Hence, this apostasy in the last days is symbolized in these words. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon, Babylon is fallen, fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drunk of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. Remember the three angels' message. This is, uh, you can get the three angels' uh, message in Revelation 14, verse 8. This is from Signs of the Times, my dear friends. February 14, 1895, 21, number 7. Now, my dear friends, we are learning in the other series. I am presenting the great controversy. <laughs> you only find 50 views, 100 views. It's all good. It was prophesied. Noah's ark only had, actually Noah, <laughs> Noah had zero. Noah had zero, only eight were convinced. So it's normal. Because when I was campaigning, the same people, I had 12,000, I still have 12,000 followers on this page. We had 50,000 views and likes and comments were like, wow. But this life-saving information has 100 views zero likes even just to like <laughs> demons are so strong that you can't press the like button oh god have mercy on you have mercy on you now my dear friends the protestants began well like we are talking about right now we're talking about martin luther we are just done talking about martin luther we are going to go to other other protestants uh, of course we are, will end up with uh, Tyndale, the one who wrote uh, the translation by inspiration of God. Now, my dear friends, that was a good movement because just like the quote, the citation we've just read here from our prophet, it started out well. It was only the Bible they ran away from or failed to reform. But later on, the same Protestant movement, now today, the prophet saw this already. The prophet saw 2022. Today, my dear friends, the Pentecostals, the so-called Protestants, because these Pentecostals came from, from Protestantism, they have united again back to the mother of all hallows, the Roman Catholic Church. They are back. They are back. All oh, the Pentecostal churches are back to the Roman Catholic Church. They are Sunday worshipping. They have left the Bible, which says worship on the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. They are back. And now they have even brought in the two billion Muslims. They have united. The world is done, my dear friends. Oh, my dear friends. Eh, Lord, have mercy. Eh, have mercy on your children. The world is... This Sunday, by this Sunday, ask me what I'll be doing. I'll be praying. I'll be... My dear friends, you are not ready. No, none of you is ready. None of us is ready. We are not ready. Oh God, have mercy upon your children. On Sunday, what if God decides to close all the, all the books for the remnant church and starts? What if God decides to close judgment for the dead? Because he's been judging the dead eh, since 1844. Judging the dead. He's done now. He's going to be done. What if he'll be done on Sunday and then starts judging the living? It's very likely that is the event that will take place in heaven 
this Sunday, God might be done with the dead. And we'll start judging them. This Sunday, this Lucifer who's giving them these Ten Commandments on Sunday was in heaven. He was in heaven where the judgment is taking place in the, on the throne. He was next to the throne of God. He knows his calendar. He knows his time is up. What if this Sunday, God ends the judgment of the dead and begins the judgment of the living? My dear friends, you have a little, little time remaining. I'm not saying that your probation will close this Sunday, the remnant church. They will pass the national Sunday law this Sunday. But I know the revelation from above told me that you will still have a few days to a few months. <laughs> maximum. If, mark my words. If from Sunday, you SDAs, you will have a few days to a few months. For that prophecy which says no one knows the hour and the time, not even the angels. For your prob that prophecy is about you, for your probation to close. Then, some of us who will be holding strong, who will be not refusing to kneel down three times a day to sincerely ask God to include us in the book of life, will receive the outpouring of the latter rain. You will not receive. And it will be done with you. So, these fellas, these presidents of the world, will receive instructions on Sunday. This is now what I'm telling you. To a certain time limit. Prophecy is all about time limits. God works with time limits. The devil has time limits. The devil will give them time limit to say where you are going back in your countries. By such, such a day, I'm not saying a month. I'm not saying a year. By such, such a day, the National Sunday Law should be passed. So these leaders will be going back to their countries. Immediately they reach their countries, they'll be in gear five now. They'll be working hard to promote climate change, adverse control measures, because they are going to hide in cheating the world that they are controlling taking care of the climate. This is the laudatacy of Pope Francis. Taking care of Mother Earth. Taking care, taking care of the planet which the devil himself has damaged. The devil has damaged this, 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 this climatic zones so that he should be worshipped. That is the plan. That is the plan. Now this here, my dear friends, is a news week uh, of this month, November. This article was written by a gentleman called Yosef. Abra Mowicz, such a very, very ugly name. But this guy is an Israelite, uh, should be a, a, a Jeep, Israelite, yeah, Israelite. This guy is basically writing his opinion here, his opinion. He is a renewable energy innovator. This gentleman was nominated by 12 African countries. He should be based in Egypt. 12 African countries for the Nobel Peace Prize for pion uh, pioneering solar energy on the continent. So, if I was still in the world, I was going to promote this guy. I, was, I have videos where I was promoting these guys, campaigning for this government, promoting climate, uh, solar, videos on solar. Go and watch them. Promoting solar. I promoted wind energy, solar energy, not knowing that I was in the devil's camp. Oh my God, you are so great. The mercy, my God, you are. The love and the grace you have shown upon me, Lord. Can it go to these other people? Mostly these people who are in the seventh day Adventists, Because they are the first ones to be cut off. Lord, quickly show them the light. So, Abraham Moni Weeks, whatever his name, Yosef. This fella is a big boy. Remember in episode two or episode three, I was talking about how Lucifer, Giordano Bruno, remember that scientist? Lucifer gives brains to these scientists. With these intelligent people you are watching on TVs every day, she's a powerful woman. She's been a bank manager for such such a, a long time. She, you are, you, you, those are your stars. Remember, Lucifer was a fallen star. Lucifer makes stars. And you follow those stars of Lucifer. Not knowing he gives them the success, the fame, the power. That's why they worship him. 
these scientists are given the Lucifer knows the secrets of how God you see, Lucifer knows the galaxy Lucifer knows the stars Lucifer knows the order of the planets that's how he gives these people the knowledge now he gave Yosef Abramowitz okay the knowledge to discover this now this guy won 12 Nobel uh, uh, prize, uh, peace prizes. Those are satanic prizes if you win those. If every one of you went to Big Brother, you never came out no more. All of you are mad. All of you who went to Big Brother house, you are mad because you are demon infested. Big Brother is a Satan himself. That's why his eye is ever watching you. Because the world where we are going, we are ever going to be watched, monitored. That is why every streets in every country now have cameras monitored on your phones monitored on every gadget lucifer wants to be monitoring every one of the people on earth okay so big brother is the same nobel peace prices is the same lions clubs is, these people are worshiping lucifer no pastors are telling you this data tomorrow i'm going to change you will hear the same one which will be there no pastor will tell you this data. Can you imagine how vital this information is? And you are throwing it away like toilet paper. You are going to hell. And it's paining. I'm feeling the pain Noah felt. Watching you, my people, going to hell. My family members. My relatives. Church members, SDA. You are the first ones to be closed. Books, chapters are closing for you. And you are relaxed. You're supposed to be crying to God now to include you. You're supposed to be moving with God step by step. Now, this guy, Yosef, he serves as an ambassador for Israel's, yeah, Israel's Climate Solution Prize. So he's Israelite. So this guy is very sensitive because this guy, the devil gave Yosef the proposal of these Ten Commandments they are going to receive on Sunday. And... This, the, the united churches, the churches have united, are going to vote this and this will happen. Ten plus one commandments. The headline of this article was, for our sin of emissions, the ten plus one climate commandments. Okay, this was his opinion. A narrow strip of biblical land. Follow closely, let's read word by word. This is so satanic because this is going to take place on Sunday. A narrow strip of biblical land from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea is not only the pathway of the Israelites during the Exodus, but it is also the birthplace of our climate redemption. Climate redemption. This November, world leaders will gather down the coast from here uh, in Shem El Sheikh to try to hammer out another climate plan for the too distant future that miraculously has already been successfully implemented in the uh, Arava Valley. By the way, take note, my dear friends, as we read down there, these guys will never say Jesus is coming soon. These guys will never talk about the redemption plan of God. They will never talk about the 666. These are Satanists working together with world presidents, working together with religious leaders, state and religion will unite. And this is exactly getting fulfilled like the prophet said it and the Bible said it. Let us continue. The region is the first in the world to be solely powered by the sun during the day. Can you see that? Producing 150% of the region's needs. And by 2015, it will be lit up night and day with solar power alone. Humanity is losing the race to beat back catastrophic climate change. Yet the Arava region's solar success serves as a prophetic, mark those words, rebuke to those who claim that going 100% green energy is not technically feasible. Economically advantageous or would take decades. The, the, so the, he's saying it won't take long. It won't take decades. This thing should happen immediately. Everybody should now switch. We are damaging. Can you see Russia is destroying the supply of oil? They are moving. We are going to move away from relying on hydroelectricity. We are going to move away from relying on fossil fuels. We are now going to rely on the energy from the sun. Way back in Egypt, during those days, do you think they had hydroelectricity? Do you think they had fossil fuel? 
They didn't. So we are going back to Egypt. That is why this thing is happening in Egypt, my dear friends. Oh God, have mercy on your children. It's back to the worship of the God, Sun God of Egyptians. I've talked of him in these other episodes that some serious people have watched. Uh, my episodes. <laughs> Ra, the Sun God, is back. The Sun God is greater than the Moon God for the Muslims. The Sun God of the Catholics is greater. It's the same God. It's Lucifer. Moon God, Sun God. Ra. All the energy should come from the sun, solar, solar electricity, so that we worship the sun god. You are going to worship Lucifer because you are denying the present truth. You are denying it. Okay. Now the tech, the technology and economics, all right, are here. Missing is moral climate leadership. So some of us who did economics have been an economist for twenty years. They are saying we will lose value very soon. We should now switch to something called the moral climate leadership. No more economists. These people who are going to be posing as economists are just cheating you. There is nothing like they're just demon worshippers. Climate hope may not come from the 27th gathering of the world leaders on the issue, but instead from a nearby place of paramount spiritual power. Can you see that? This is an innovator. This guy is not even, he's not hiding as a religious, but underneath is a serious occultist. Occultist. This guy who's writing this is a serious worshiper of Satan. So he's shifting. He's, he's supposed to be talking professional. He's not talking professional here. As economists, when we used to go to the Economics Association of Zambia, when I used to go there, to the Economics Association of Zambia, we needed economics. We needed professionalism. This is spiritualism. This is a professional talking spiritualism. All professionals, even if they are world leaders of different countries, they are going not, they are now not going to use professionalism. They are going to use spiritualism. That is why Malawi has a, a, a guy who's, who's a pastor who's leading there. They are all spiritualists. All right? Climate hope may not come from the 27th gathering of world leaders on the issue, but instead from a nearby place of paramount spiritual power. A group of us under the auspices of the Interfaith Center for Elijah, the Interfaith Institute, recently came together at Mount Sinai to envision, can you see satanic? What message of hope and transformation religious religions can offer to humanity as we grapple with the challenges of climate justice. Climate justice. One of these ideas was returning to the Ten Commandments given at Mount Sinai. While not set in stone, here is my vision with a bit of help from my friends. Those friends he's talking about are demons. The first, now let's go through the commandments, my dear friends, step by step. Okay? The first one says to acknowledge a higher power. Like in Alcoholics Anonymous, can you see? You remember God's ten commandments? The first four are to worship God. It ends with remember the Sabbath day. Then the remaining six are for loving one another, neighbors. So that's why Jesus said the whole ten laws is divided into two. The first four love God, then the other ones is loving your neighbor. So, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Thou shalt not bow down in any graven, for any graven images. The Catholics removed this one in their Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath, what? Day to keep it, what? Holy. These four are for God. This blasphemous devil, devils, have also put the first one to be for their God, Lucifer. Acknowledge a higher power. Okay? So, in the dictionary, my dear friends, being sub, uh, subservient, it means uh, uh, to pre uh, in the dictionary, I, I checked this word out, in the dictionary, sub, uh, subservient means prepared to obey others unquestionably. That is serious. That is serious. You have to be prepared to obey others without question. That is coming. That's the first rule there. They are going to impose it. The second commandment to, to be given on Sunday on the 13th will be vote climate. Everybody has to vote for the climate change here. Okay? For, the, for climate. Uh, remember, the uprising is the majority. The majority rules in satanic kingdoms. Even you in the SDA who are saying that we are few, and the majority of the pastors are correct, but they are not saying this message. That is the way it goes, my dear friends. That is the second commandment. They are the vote 
voting will rule. People will vote Lucifer. The third one is do not meddle. This one is so interesting. It says, since we know that millions of people, usually the poorest and indigenous, will die and suffer from the effects of extreme heat and cold, wildfires of extreme, the fires is making Lucifer, heat and cold, wildfires, rising sea levels, is Lucifer doing all those things, supercharged storms, Lucifer. Why doesn't the business, now listen to this part, why doesn't the business as usual approach of most leaders make them accessories to murder? Look at that. Look at that. So, if they are going to say that as a leader of a certain big company, multilateral company, multinational companies, and monopolies, whatever businesses, you are a boss, you are a CEO, and you are not going to implement these laws which they are going to give us, which will include, of course, the Sunday law you are going to be looked at as a murderer. The courts of law. And remember who makes the laws? The United Nations. These are the same people. They are there in Egypt. The UN is the one leading this meeting. The fourth one is do not steal. Climate change is robbing our future, says this. We are also robbing nature of her ability. So, you will be, we will be, as children of God who are going to refuse Sunday law, my dear friends, we will be accused of murder and theft. There will be a lot. The prisons are already empty. I did that in the other episode. Those who don't watch my episodes, you're going, to be, you're going to watch them when it will be too late. Do not bear false witness. Another crime. There are sins of omission. Politicians are not telling the truth about the real and immediate dangers of climate change. And there are sins of commission. The same leaders at the annual World Climate Conference, COP27, who are approving new drilling and pipeline licenses, together says right. Uh, these distortions. So, again, pressure on the leaders. Pressure on the leaders. Leaders of the different countries of this world. You attended, you go, you attend the summit in Egypt. When you go back home, you should promote this thing, COP27. That is an instruction that was given to them. Now, this is the one that is sensitive here. Keep the Sabbath. Remember when the Catholic, when they changed the Ten Commandments? When they changed the fourth one, where God said, remember the Sabbath day, the seventh, six days, you can do your labor, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. The commandment that began even before the ten were made in Genesis chapter 2, they changed it in, the, in their Catholic catechism, in their commandments. They said, remember the Sabbath day. They shortened it. Remember the Sabbath day. Sunday, Sunday, the first day of the week is our Sabbath. So when they say Sabbath, they are referring to the Catholic Ten Commandments, not the Biblical Ten Commandments. So, the Sabbath is Sunday because Catholic changed it from the one God wrote in the Bible, which says Sabbath is the seventh day of the week to Sabbath first day of the week. In 321 AD by, by a Pope called Constance, Constantine. In 321 AD, so, now, this is where now the game is on this commandment, my dear friends. This is where the secret is. You are, this is passing a national Sunday law. It has come. It has come. Those of you who are saying, no, it's coming after 50 years, it's coming after 10 years, you are giving yourself, you are not wanting to enter the ark, as we have entered the ark. We have entered the ark with our prophet Ellen G. White, with our prophet Every generation had a prophet. Remember, I've been telling you that. Aaron and Caleb loved the prophet. They entered Canaan. You hate Ellen White, the prophet, you will not enter heavenly Canaan. Now, emissions are down by 30% over the Sabbath every week in Israel, you see, and are almost zeroed out on uh, Yom Kippur. Zeroed out the Jewish Day of uh, Atonement, the holiest of the year. Jews have united, I've told you already, with Catholics. A global weekly non-carbon day of rest could reduce emissions of the world by a seventh and can be observed by different faith communities on different days. Now, you see, did the Sabbath, did God say you, you can remember the Sabbath day on different days? Do you know why they are saying different days? They are saying we have united with Muslims who worship on Friday. We have united with Jews who worship on Saturday. We have united with Catholics who worship on Sunday. Now, this has to be a global day. 
of different faiths. Since they have already accepted Mr. Pope Francis' invitation, the Jews, the Sabbath guys, the seventh day, the Jews, those who rejected Jesus, those who rejected Jesus but continued observing the seventh day, <laughs> those, also, those Jews also rejected the last prophet of Jesus, Ellen G. White. Those cha characters, the Jews, you can see the picture there, they have united with the Catholic. They are under Mr. Francis, Pope Francis the Antichrist, and the Muslims, the Friday worshippers. So these people are going to observe one day globally. They will switch and they will tell you that the day that we are going to observe is not the biblical day, but the day made by the Pope, Sunday, the sunny day, the day of the sun. This commandment will be given on Sunday. And yet, you still stand up, wear Dockers uniforms, wear big suits, polish yourselves, stand on pulpits, call yourselves pastors and elders, and joke with these messages. You are not even going, tomorrow we are going to church. You are not going to listen to such sermons. The seventh one is saying, thou shall, you shall innovate. They are promoting innovation. Mount Sinai is all about. Then the, the eighth one is honor Mother Earth. Okay? The ninth one is do not honor Mother Earth. Not honoring God. You have to honor nature. The Bible says we don't worship nature. We don't worship the created. But we worship the creator. These characters, these Satan worshippers, they want every one of you to worship the creation, not the creator. That is what the Laudata Si is all about. You need not to covet. Those are their commandments. Do not continue to be hoodwinked. Those are their commandments. But now let's read the last one, the one they are adding, because they are saying 10 plus 1. This one is sensitive. Let's go together. Do not give up hope on the fight. The rise, they want you to fight. The rise of ancient Egyptian dynasties coincided with the rise of worship of Ra. Look at that, my friends. This is the, the new commandment. Worship of Ra, the sun god. A new era of renewable, of a new era of renewable must shine out of Egypt. Oh God, this November is our civilization. Oh no. Like that of ancient Egyptians. Oh, we will be doomed. Our religious leaders of all faiths, including SDA, ascend on Mount Sinai on November the 13th during COP 27. I am Tomorrow I'm going to talk about the SDAs who are in. The SDA is already in. The SDA is in. Tomorrow I'll talk about it after the Sabbath. They will seek to touch the heart of humanity and deliver a prophetic message. Sinai power worked once before to fuel moral revolutions. Oh God, it must work again to keep global warming at 1.5 degrees Celsius by the end of this century. Oh no, we need a miracle. They need a miracle. They are going back to worshiping Ra. This is the plus one out of the ten blasphemous commandments, they have added a serious one. They are saying, let's go back to ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt never had hydroelectricity. Ancient Egypt never had fossil fuels. These are polluting the earth. But it's Lucifer who brought them. So that he knew that when his 6,000 years is done, the earth is done, we are 6,000 years, my friend. The 7,000 uh, 7, year, we're going to spend it in heaven with Jesus. When we come back here, you, the dead, will resurrect. The evil dead, the people who are rejecting this message, the present truth, you are going to resurrect, including you, the seventh days, who are rejecting your own prophet, Ellen G. White, and the present truth, the sealing truth, you are going to resurrect after 7,000 years. Lucifer knows his time is up. Lucifer knew his program way back 6,000 years ago. So he saw Egypt, he saw today, Lucifer saw today, Lucifer saw the knowledge that would increase at the end of the world. Lucifer gives these satanists knowledge to know things which you people can't see. Now it's back to worshiping the sun god. My dear friends, may God be with us. May God be with us. Let us pray. Mighty Father, Lord, be with your children. Lord, be with your children. I'm down, Lord. I beg, my father. Oh, this is so painful. You are about to close those books, Lord. 
and they are not ready. None of them is ready. They are not ready. Oh, mighty Father. They still have a soft place for these Satan worshippers. They are still mingling with them. They are still, Lord, ten. let your power be manifest, Lord. Those, at least who are listening to me, at least those who are listening to me right now, Lord, touch their hearts. I cannot convince them. I'm just a messenger. No, I couldn't convince them. He was just a messenger. And will be rewarded for just being messengers, not for convince, not for converting souls. That is too heavy for us. It's you, Lord. Manifest your power. I pray for your children. I pray for them, those listening to me and watching. Help them. Deliver them. The devil's demons have multiplied. Deliver them, Lord. Let them see. Open up their brains the way you opened me up. Let them see the light. Let them receive the seal before you close the probation. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, remember, tomorrow, go to church. Worship. Those of you who are not feeling well, worship from home. You can watch. We have a lot of episodes. I have a lot of episodes behind. All those episodes, I never wrote them myself. I'm getting them from the prophet. Reading word by word. There's great controversy, prophetic revelations. That should be your food. Pray, pray, pray. This is now time to be like Enoch. Only 144,000 Enochs. In that group, everyone will be like Enoch. Who enter the kingdom of heaven. Ask yourself, are you Enoch? Have you reached that level? My dear friends, we have a work to do. We need to be praying, pleading to God. We have a work to do. We have a work to do starting with us. The work starts in us, in our hearts. The real problem is inside. The real problem is not outside. The real problem is inside. The real problem is inside because you want to satisfy your friends, your mothers who are witchcrafts and your fathers who are witchcrafts, your aunties who are witchcrafts, your friends at work. You want to make, you want to appear to be the champion to all these people. You want to listen to their advice. You want them to convince you that the little flock is wrong, but the bigger road is correct. May, Lord have, may the Lord have mercy. Join me tomorrow after the Sabbath as we go deeper. Because tomorrow is the last day, then on Sunday, it will, I'm not presenting anything because I'll be, pray, I'll be in prayers. I'll be in prayers from sunrise to sunset. I'll be also praying for you. But remember Job prayed for his family. All his children perished. Even his wife left him. She's going to resurrect in the second resurrection. Job was given another wife. So, I will pray for you, but you also need to pray. You also need to pray for yourself. So, tomorrow after the Sabbath, let's meet. Tomorrow we'll be talking about a very sensitive topic. I will look at how the Seventh-day Adventists also are going to be part of this COP27. Ted Wilson and his group. Oh my God, have mercy upon your children. Remember, Maranatha, Jesus is coming again soonest. Amen.
shall lead me night and day. Jesus shall lead me all the way. He is the truth as friends to me. For I remember Calvary. shall lead me night and day. Jesus shall lead me all the way. He's the truest friend to me who I remember Calvary. Jesus shall lead me night and day. 